A lowly tarnished. Playing as a lord. I command thee. We have very quickly gone from having absolutely zero information on From Software's hotly anticipated Elden Ring to having just so much information about Elden Ring. I was fortunate enough to talk with the Godfather of Souls himself, Hidetaka Miyazaki, who gave me a huge amount of information on the game that totally recontextualizes what we saw in the most recent trailer. Here's what's really going on in the lands between. They will fight, and they will die in an unending curse. The trailer opens up in a very typical Souls-like fashion with a softly spoken woman uttering a very cryptic message. The Tarnished will soon return. So, who are the Tarnished? Well, for one, it's you. The player character is one of the Tarnished, much like in the Dark Souls games where you are a chosen undead or an ashen one. To explain what it means to be Tarnished, we must first explain a little bit about the world of Elden Ring, known as the Lands Between. The lands between and the people who reside within it, both great and small, were blessed by the Elden Ring and the Erd Tree, which symbolizes its presence. Those given grace by the ring are characterized by having a golden aura that's predominantly shown in their eyes. However, after a time, for one reason or another, some individuals lose this grace and were thus exiled from the lands between, labeled as tarnished. Then, for reasons unknown, the Elden Ring was shattered. Its pieces picked up and carried by many of the bosses that you'll eventually come to fight in the game. The destruction of the Elden Ring calls out to the Tarnished and compels them to return to the Lands Between, guiding them back to their former home. According to Miyazaki, one of the main themes of the game is how the players, the Tarnished, approaches or treats this newfound grace and this return to the land that they were once banished from, how they interpret this and the meaning. Miyazaki wants the player to discover for themselves what this return means and how they want to begin their adventure. The Lands Between is broken up into six distinct areas, each overseen by a particular demigod who holds a shard of the Elden Ring and has been twisted and warped by its power. I asked Miyazaki-san if there was an order to which you must approach these six areas, or if the player had total freedom to visit any of them right from the beginning, to which he responded that, while you won't be able to access everything from the start, there are a lot of different ways that you can approach each area, and that there's a lot of freedom as to which order you can tackle different areas as well. There will be a hub area that will link these six areas, but it's not accessible right from the start of the game. Miyazaki further clarified that each of the six areas will house its own mainline dungeon map, which is seamlessly connected to the lands between itself. So from there, you're able to explore these mainline dungeon areas, all of which are interspersed throughout the map. And, of course, while you will be using a horse to travel great distances around on foot, or, you know, hoof, there will be a fast travel system as well. Though, of course, Miyazaki's preference is that players enjoy that aspect of exploration and uncovering the map for themselves. And it seems like there will be plenty of incentive to explore as well. Miyazaki confirmed that the skills that you see in the trailer, like this, this, and this, can be obtained through exploration much like in the previous games where you would find weapons and magic spells off the beaten paths. Weapon skills can also be interchanged between weapons, and there are more than a hundred of them to discover, which Miyazaki hopes, when combined with the many different weapons and magic spells, will offer build customizations that are richer and more varied than ever before. Finally, let's talk about some of these wild enemy designs. The main bosses are demigods who are written by Song of Ice and Fire author George R.R. R. Martin and they inherited the mad tainted power of the Elden Ring shards once it was shattered. One of the things Miyazaki wanted to convey in their designs is that they're not just horrible monsters, but that there's an element of heroism and mythology to them as well, as they're essentially the old gods of this world. Each of the demigods fell to madness and ruin in their own individual ways, and FromSoft's designs aim to showcase this dichotomy of heroism and ruin. Brandish the Elden Ring. A key focus in Elden Ring is to empower the player with a feeling of freedom, not just in the way in which they explore, but also in the ways they approach encounters in various situations. To that end, stealth is now a viable option in certain situations, like this moment from the trailer. You're able to crouch, sneak, and be less easily detected in tall grass. And if you're stealthy enough, you can even bypass certain areas 
or potentially get to a position where you're able to easily assess situations from afar. Miyazaki says FromSoft wanted to create these opportunities for players to see what lies ahead of them and below them and around them and to assess how they're going to confront that or not as the case may be. So Stealth, while it is a simple implementation, it allows for a lot more of these possibilities. In addition to using Stealth, another key gameplay feature is the ability to summon spirits to aid you in battle. This is nothing new to the Souls series, but what's different here is that you can actually summon the spirits of enemy characters as allies to assist you in battle. There are a large variety of them, so they're a nice collectible element within the game world to discover and equip as you go. Of course, Miyazaki also made sure to clarify that there would still be online summons where you could bring other players into your world for cooperative play as well. Of course, one of the most marketed selling points of Elden Ring is George R.R. Martin. The way Miyazaki describes it, Martin created Elden Ring's foundations, building up the world's history and mythos, which was subsequently iterated on by FromSoft. For example, Martin created the Tarnished and their Lost Grace, a spurring moment for the player character. But then on top of that, Miyazaki explained, FromSoft built a lot of their own world, story, and gameplay elements that are necessary to the game and necessary to the player's guidance and how they find that footing in the world. Miyazaki said it was a great collaboration, and it was a rather fresh approach for the team. Rather than imposing new restrictions on the game, Martin himself was very open to From Software prioritizing the game's systems and leaving out anything they didn't want to explore even though that ended up not being the case. Miyazaki explained that Martin's work was a huge source of inspiration and the impetus for the design of the game, so the world building and the systems went hand in hand. From Software has a reputation for its unique brand of story told predominantly within the margins. Miyazaki said that this will continue in Elden Ring. We want to retain that sense of the player discovering things for themselves and enjoying uncovering the world both in terms of action and narrative for themselves. We don't want to force anything on the player. That much has not changed. However, Miyazaki was also keen to express that an ease of understanding is paramount. Elden Ring is more character focused than previous Souls games. While the player character themselves is a blank slate, other characters will provide a sense of depth and color. Even with all I learned about Elden Ring and the hour I was given to pick Miyazaki's brain, there are still so many questions. What about PvP? How actually does online co-op work? Why does this man have two axes, 15 arms, and a bird head that breathes fire as one of those arms? Like all Souls games, it's best to leave some information to be discovered for yourself. Fortunately, the wait is no longer without end, as Elden Ring is dated for a release on January 21st, 2022. Make sure to check out the full interview on IGN for some extra tidbits of information, and for everything else, keep it here on IGN.